It was a season that lasted almost 11 months. It was divided by a Winter World Cup for the first time in the competition's history, and this is TIFO's look back at 2022-23, the year when football never slept. Now let's start with a roll call of champions and title winners. Argentina won the World Cup, defeating France on penalties in the final. Manchester City won the Champions League, beating Internazionale 1-0. And Sevilla captured their seventh Europa League title. After a fractious game which ended with Roma coach Jose Mourinho confronting referee Anthony Taylor in the stadium car park. With almost the last kick of the game, and despite a miserable year in the Premier League, West Ham defeated Fiorentina in the Conference League final, winning their first major trophy for 43 years. Domestically, Paris Saint-Germain, Manchester City and Barcelona were all their national champions. And Napoli won their first Scudetto since 1990. In Germany, Bayern Munich profited from a final day Borussia Dortmund collapse to seize their 11th Bundesliga in a row. And Manchester City also won the FA Cup, completing the first treble in English football since 1999. But it was a mixed year for City. Despite their success and Erling Haaland breaking Andy Cole and Alan Shearer's record for the number of goals scored in a Premier League season, the league itself charged the club with over 100 different breaches of their financial rules, in a case that will drag through the courts, potentially for years. Back on the pitch, elsewhere in Europe, Feyenoord won the Eredivisie, a last-minute goal from Toby Alderweireld helped Royal Antwerp win the Jupiler League, and Benfica were Portuguese champions. Barcelona Femini rebounded from disappointment a year ago to beat Wolfsburg in the Women's Champions League final, winning their second title in three years. England beat Brazil in the inaugural Finalissima in front of over 83,000 supporters. And Emma Hayes' Chelsea won their fourth consecutive WSL title, while also beating Manchester United 1-0 in the FA Cup final in front of 77,390 fans at Wembley, a world record for a women's domestic club match. But women's football had its difficult moments too. In September 2022, 15 members of the Spanish national team went on strike in protest against the team's culture and direction. They would lose. The Spanish Football Federation backed their coach, and nine months later, 12 of those 15 would be omitted from the World Cup squad. And it wasn't quite the year of the underdog on the pitch either, but there were still plenty of unlikely stories. Union Berlin finished fourth in Germany and qualified for the Champions League. Little Luton Town won promotion to the Premier League for the first time in their history. Saudi Arabia beat Argentina in Qatar. And Morocco knocked out Spain and Portugal, becoming the first African and first Arab nation to reach the semi-finals of the World Cup, in the first competition to be held in the Middle East. But as always, it was a season of stories, some of which have even been forgotten. Thomas Tuchel and Antonio Conte feuded on the Stamford Bridge touchline after Chelsea drew with Tottenham. Both would later be sacked. In fact, each club would be coached by three different managers before the end of the season. Nottingham Forest avoided relegation despite signing 30 players in just two transfer windows. Chelsea briefly flirted with lower mid-table, but did so after spending more on transfers across two windows than every Serie A club combined. And there were strange scenes in October, when Hull City against Birmingham City was delayed by 20 minutes after one of the goals was found to be too tall. The game couldn't start until it had been sawn down by two inches. Arsenal and Ajax women encountered the opposite problem ahead of their Champions League qualifier when a member of Arsenal's staff noticed that the goalposts were too small and needed to be adjusted before kickoff. Also in the autumn, Jude Bellingham, at just 19, became the youngest player ever to captain a Bundesliga team when he took the armband against Cologne. At season's end, Bellingham would join Real Madrid for a fee that, if clauses are met, could make him the most expensive British player in history. The former holder of that record, Gareth Bale, announced his retirement from football after the World Cup, and Spain and Barcelona legend Gerard Piquet also departed, retiring in November after a game against Almera. Also, in late 2022, just after the World Cup tournament had started, the entire Juventus board resigned in response to a developing accountancy scandal. Several members were given temporary bans from football, and the team had a points deduction assessed, then overturned, and then reinstated but reduced. Juventus also had a difficult time with VAR. In September, a late Arcadius Milik winner against Savanatana was incorrectly ruled out after cameras failed to spot a defender who was playing the Juve player onside. 
The same would happen to Arsenal in reverse, when a Brentford goal at the Emirates was allowed to stand after VAR missed a clear offside in the build-up. And in Spain, there was a deplorable controversy. Vinicius Jr.'s season started and ended with the sound of monkey chanting from different sets of supporters, as he was abused by Atletico Madrid and Valencia fans. In Wales, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney's Wrexham were promoted into the Football League. In Scotland, Ange Postacoglu won a League Cup and League Cup treble with Celtic before leaving for Tottenham. In the Champions League, Porto goalkeeper Diogo Costa became the first player to save three consecutive penalties in the competition's history. Marcin Oleksi became the first Polish player and the first amputee player to win FIFA's Pushkas Award, awarded for the most beautiful goal of the calendar year. Zlatan Ibrahimovic retired, and so did Joaquin. Both were in their 40s. Cristiano Ronaldo left Manchester United for Saudi Arabia, and after winning his first Ballon d'Or, Karim Benzema joined him. Four Saudi Pro League clubs were nationalised, and many more are still expected to follow. But Lionel Messi isn't going. He's heading for MLS's Inter Miami instead. And of course, there were some sombre goodbyes as well. To Just Fontaine, the holder of the record for the number of goals scored at a World Cup Finals, who passed away at the age of 89. And of course, perhaps the greatest of them all, Pele, who died in December at 82 in his native Brazil. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.